quite early on Thursday morning in my study. The sun's busy coming up. It's getting cold now. And I've been reflecting on the, my week. I don't know about you, but sometimes in a month, th there's a week that changes your life completely. Sometimes there's a day in a week that changes your life completely. Sometimes it's just an hour in a day that changes your life. And, and sometimes there's just one moment in a day where your life has changed forever. Whether it's something that happens in your life or in your family or a situation that you hear about or come across changes your life forever. I've had, I've had two of those this past week. And so it's early. I thought I want to record. I want to record today in my study Thursday morning early. Share from my heart. And I hope that's okay with you. I could have got dressed up. I could have prepared a bit more but I thought you know what I want to share today from my heart and so one of those moments has been when I was in a zoom meeting with some pastors this past week from around the country the legend Trevor Hudson hosted this zoom meeting and there were some Anglican bishops there were some Baptist ministers there were some Catholic priests uh, Methodist ministers all on this zoom chat and then there was me Foxy, my name Foxy on the screen in this Zoom meeting. And Trevor Hudson hit it out the park. He asked us some incredible questions. And the topic of conversation was going along the lines of this one specific question. I've been reflecting on it all week. I want to share it with you. Is that okay? Are you ready for this question? Here it is. Who am I? I've been thinking about it. Who am I? In other words, I've been asking myself, what is my identity? What is my identity based on? Who am I? Who are you, Daryl? Is it the fact that your name is Daryl? Is, is that what you're basing your identity on? Some people call me Foxy. That's my nickname. Is that my identity? Uh, maybe my identity is based on the fact that I'm a pastor. So, I mean, you're saying, surely, Daryl, that's your identity, but you're a pastor, that, that's your identity. Maybe. Maybe I've been basing my identity on what people say about me. Maybe that's the case for you as well, because if you're like me, you, you care a lot about what people say about you. And, and so you, you base your identity on that, on, on what people say about you. And that's easy. It's easy to base your identity on what people say about you. So I've been asking myself, who are you? I want to ask you today, sitting in your lounge or in your bed, in your study, who are you? What are you basing your identity on? What are you taking your identity off of? I met a young man on Monday. He's involved in his family business, busy stepping into his dad's footsteps. And everyone around him is, is saying, you go boy, you just do exactly what your dad does. You follow in your dad's shadow, do exactly what he does, do exactly what he says, and you'll be successful. And he's saying, but, but, I, but I'm not my dad. I'm not my dad. I, I don't have the same identity as, as my dad. And I felt like God was saying to him, listen, pal. Don't take your identity off of your dad. Because this young man needs to live in his own identity. And I shared some of my life story with him. Of how there was a stage in my life where I started losing my identity. I stopped being who Daryl was. Being the man that God had made me to be. It felt like I was in a box. And I'd lost my identity. And God's been really kind to me in a miraculous way. God brought a man into my life who God used to, to start helping me again to, to live in the identity of who God made me to be. And I don't think we will ever forget about people who God uses to unlock the identity that he's given us. That's true, hey friends. When, when we are allowed to, to live 
in our own identity, we are free to live in the identity that God's made us to live with. And we start living in freedom. We start thriving. And so I've been reflecting on my identity this week. And I've been asking myself, what am I basing my identity on? Here's the first thought that I had. Maybe I've been basing my identity on who I'm associated with. Yeah, because if I'm associated with that group of pastors, then, then I'm A for away, hey? Then I'm okay. Maybe you base your identity on the company that you work for. Let me tell you a story. Many years ago, I was at a function and a man that I know had just joined this organization. And at this function, the, the big boss of that organization was there and I overheard him speaking to this man who had just joined that organization and he greeted this man and he said so how is my new staff member doing and, and I thought wow he has this man that I know he, he's joining this organization he's gonna become a, a staff member for this organization is there a chance that he's gonna start losing his identity and now he's going to be just a staff member working for that organization how's my new staff member doing right or wrong but that man's identity was now being based on the organization that he was working for and i think back to myself i think back to the the group of cyclists that i want to be associated with and so I joked with my group of cyclist friends this week. I said, guys, I'm done. I, I'm going to want to now be associated with that group of cyclists. Because they're the A group. They train much harder. They, they, they ride for much longer. I want to be associated with them now. Bye-bye. And, and so there was a joke as to them saying, cheers, Daryl. Have a nice laugh, bud. But but I think it's true. Sometimes I think us as cyclists, we, we like kids. Eh? And speaking of kids, I, I got a WhatsApp from a man in our church this week. He said to me, Daryl, I think my kids, he says, my kids are busy losing their identity. Because they, they're no longer being associated with the kids that they have, their friends at school. He says they're losing their identity. I thought, wow. And then the ladies watching today, don't think you're off the hook. Because I think it's true for you as well, ladies. You want to be associated with that group of ladies in Benoni, don't you? Yeah, there's that group that you want to be associated with. You want to go to that hairdresser. Because that's the, the great good hairdresser and i'm saying to my wife babes what's happening with the with the blonde no uh, my hairdresser I, i'm saying okay you you're not going to anybody else you're going back to that hairdresser because she sorted out my wife's hair proper ladies you want to go to that person who does your nails you want to be associated with that hairdresser and with that nail specialist that's true because perhaps those people, those women, those friends will give you the identity that, that you want, that you're looking for. So let's go back to me, Foxy. I've been asking myself, am I basing my identity on whom I'm associated with? And I've been asking myself then as well, have I maybe been basing my identity on what car I drive? What, what bicycle I ride? what house i stay in and i've realized man again during lockdown these things what car i drive what bicycle i ride where i stay can be taken away from us just like that and if we basing our identity on those things and they get taken away from us we're going to have an identity crisis so, so what else do we base our identity on is it based on my personality and for many of you, your personalities, you're an introvert and you've been loving lockdown. My life, I said to my wife the other day, can we just go and have a coffee with those people? Just go and connect with them. No, we're not allowed to. It's lockdown. 
I know we're not allowed to, but can we just go? And for us as extroverts, it's been tough, eh? It's been tough. Maybe you feel that your identity has, has been changed somewhat during lockdown. Maybe you feel you're becoming someone that you're actually not. Because emotionally, you, you've been affected. Maybe you, your identity is based on the title that you have. Someone said to me last week, Friday, they said, you need to speak to this man regarding the land and get his opinion and perspective and they said this man is doctor so and so i thought wow well if he's a doctor if he's a specialist in his field then we definitely need to speak to him we take our identity and we base it on the title that we have i mean thinking about a man in the bible he he had a title jesus called him the rock this man, Peter, he learned some valuable life lessons. I think he, he battled with his identity all the way through his life. But at the end of his life, we see how, how this man no longer fell all over the place. Throughout his life, he fell all over the place. He fell into the water, trying to find his identity. Walking on water, he fell in. He tried to find his identity in the things that he did. There he goes. He chops that, that soldier's ear off. And the ear falls off next to him. Trying to find his identity in the things that he does. Falling into temptation. Denying Jesus. He fell into that. But at the end of his life, this man Peter writes 1 and 2 Peter. And I think... He gets his identity right. He shares this with us, friends, in chapter 1 of 1 Peter, verse 17. It says, since you call on a father, he's writing to us. He's understood. Peter's understood who his father is. It's not his earthly father. It's his heavenly father in heaven. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially. Do you get that, friends? Peter's understood now who his identity is in. His heavenly father. It goes on in chapter 2, verse 4. It says this, As you come to him, the living stone. He's talking to us. He says, guys, as you come to him, the living stone. Who's the living stone? Jesus. As you and I come to Jesus, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. He has the verse. He has the verse that gives us the clue to where identity is found. It says, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house. That's our identity, friends. Coming to Jesus, knowing our heavenly father, being a living stone. That. I've realized is my identity being built into a spiritual house. There's a lady in our community just 43 years old yesterday passed on tragically but she was a living stone she was being built into a spiritual house, going through life, all the curveballs, all the disappointments, but building her life on Jesus, the cornerstone of her life. She was a living stone here. She's not here now, but she's a living stone with her heavenly father right now. In heaven. And friends, as I've realized again, Daryl, who are you, bud? Are you basing your identity on your name or what you do or the things that you have? This morning again, I've realized I need to base my identity on the fact that I am a living stone. Be a living stone with me. Building your life on Jesus, the cornerstone. God bless you. As you and I discover together 
our identity in Jesus. Amen. My goodness, who else can relate to a tough week? I certainly can. It's definitely been one of those weeks. But what an incredible reminder this morning. What an incredible message to be reminded that who are we basing our identity on? Who are we basing our identity on? I think all of us at times base our identity on a, a title, um, on things, or on our name. But I want to challenge us this morning to remember that identity is in Jesus, the cornerstone of your life. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus and made him the cornerstone of your life. And we're all going to pray now. And if you possibly want to make Jesus the cornerstone of your life, pray with me. But uh, yeah, let's, let's all pray now. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for this challenge, this message that you brought to us, that we can be reminded who our identity is, that you are the cornerstone of our lives. Lord, I pray in this coming week ahead that we can uh, just put our identity in you and be rest assured that you are the cornerstone of our lives. If, if you want to make Jesus the cornerstone of your life now, why don't you just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I commit my life to you. I commit my identity to you and I make you the cornerstone of my life today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a very special family now. He's going to share a four-minute video clip with us. So please stay tuned and quickly look at that uh, video clip. Okay. Morning, Freedom Family. Morning. How are morning. you keeping on this cold Sunday morning? Daryl's asked us to have a chat to you about um, as, a, as a family, as a Mooney family, and how the, the Wednesday nights, the Bring Your Own Coffee evenings, have impacted our lives. So we just thought we'd give you a little quick... Uh, um, insight into how it's affect, uh, how it affected us and impacted our family. Yeah, so from my side, um, I just feel like chatting to everyone on a Wednesday has really brought the Freedom family together. And I just feel like even though it's over a computer, like people are really being vulnerable and real with where they're at. Yeah, and I just feel like it's really building a community and a family in Freedom. Yeah, definitely. So from my side, I just enjoy all the messages. So just looking forward to actually seeing the different messages from different people. Um, and I often find that on those on those Wednesdays, um, I find that those messages are actually quite um, relevant to my life at that moment. So it doesn't mean that every message will be for everybody, but I think um, if there's even one or two people that can take a message from the Wednesdays, I think it's absolutely awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, to build on what Kay and my mum have said, I think with regards to, um, you know, just speaking to different people, and it's, it's, it's really a platform where we can be vulnerable and just get real with each other. And um, I think for mm. me, what's been really important is I've always, I've always hated being a part of a church that pretends to be perfect, um, because you go to church and you see people's best sides, and it's, it's on a Wednesday night, it's really been a platform to see um, that we all have the same struggles and none of us are the perfect Christians mm. and it's really just become a real a real church versus a perfect church because um, I think we know that the church isn't meant for perfect people um, so I think that's been that's been really nice for me and the other thing is um, just it's been a platform where you know as we break off into our small groups we really get to engage with the message and um, just make it practical within our own lives and um, yeah just to really you know, interact with each other and see how we can better ourselves and, you know, sometimes we learn from each other and, yeah, it's just a really nice platform to make the topics practical within our own lives. Excellent. And uh, for me in particular, um, I found that, you know, it doesn't matter who we are, um, poor income brackets from high to low, we've all got the same issues, we've all got the same problems. Yeah. And what I found um, was that this allowed me, looking at all the folks and looking at everybody's that have got issues, the vulnerabilities that have come out, that it's, uh, it's so nice to know that I don't have to now need to ask family members only if I needed help, if I needed to chat to somebody, if I needed financial assistance. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, I could turn to anybody at freedom. And it's knowing that it's a true body of Christ 
as Robin says, it's a real church. It's a true and a, a real, um, a real body with real people, and um, it's it's that that has uh, it's allowed me to just wow, just you know, even appeal to whoever needs to. I mean, if you guys are anybody out there that needs a bit of help with, please, you know, reach out to any one of us. Um, Daryl, you, you've got the email addresses, you've got the, the WhatsApp. So please don't feel, um, don't feel and uh, proud. Just, you know, this Wednesday nights have really humbled me to the point where I feel I belong. Mm -hmm. I belong where I, I know I can ask any one of you for, for help. Yeah, so thank you very much for the message and enjoy. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Wow, that was a cool, special family that. And um, I, I just love what Robin, Kay and Jerry and Kim have shared. And um, thank you guys for that. And, and remember, if you need help with Kim, please really contact us. On the screen below is uh, all the information that you need. Uh, a few announcements, please remember, Live Life Groups on Wednesday. Live Life Groups on Wednesday, you've heard all about it. Business Navigators on Thursday. And if you need anything else, please just, um, yeah, contact us on the information on the screen. Uh, this morning, I really want to honor the band members and the worship team. My goodness, it's been incredible to just worship with you guys and be in God's presence. I know the amount of effort and time that you guys have put in, mashing that all together and mixing it all together. We honor you guys. So stay tuned. Let's enjoy worship now together. And have a great Sunday. In Jesus' name. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a melody I raise it hallelujah heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from
sing a little louder. Oh, sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. focus on God and persevere till the end, and others stayed focused on their circumstances and the world around them and lost the plot. Friends, when I look at those who persevered, I learn from them and I see that in times of troubles, tribulations and joy, they raised the hallelujah to God our Father and they praised Him for everything that He is, He deserves, and everything that He brings in our life. He is passion, He is love, and He is life. Friends, we have the opportunity to love and to honor God in a way that He deserves and let's do it to the full. Let's not forget about Him, let's not focus on the world, let's praise and love Jesus because that's what He deserves. Let's raise a hallelujah to God our Father and unite this body in Christ and bring more people in and just bring glory to God our Father because that's what He deserves in the name of Jesus. I raise a hallelujah
for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are in faith. to those around me Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath. We could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart. to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. You open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Show me who you are and 
guard and lead me in your love to those around me. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation, and I will put my trust in. Put my trust in you alone.